think of us contributing to the cloud as a whole, as if the cloud is an open source project. We see an area where there could be some improvement, a new feature that people have been asking for and wanting, including ourselves. So we forked it, we made a feature branch, we pushed our code up to that, and then we opened a PR with the upstream. When it gets merged, it benefits everyone. Hi, this is your host of the Bharatiya and we are here at KubeCon in Paris, France. And today we have with us once again, Billy Thompson, Cloud Engineering Manager at Akamai. Billy, it's good to have you back on the show. It's always a pleasure, thank you. It's first day, it's very, very loud. I will not talk about how the event has been so far because it's a great event. So, uh, but I want to just from, from, I mean, it's very early on, but what kind of cloud are you seeing here? Well, I typically see a lot of people who are new to Kubernetes. And then we're seeing a lot of platform engineers, a lot of DevOps, which makes sense because the whole origins of cloud native, the patterns and everything that it's used for, it starts with DevOps and then the 12 factor app principles, containerization technology and orchestration. So this is essentially a big boom of DevOps that just moved forward in a really explosive way. Perfect, thank you. Now let's hear from Akamai's perspective. What are you folks doing here? What kind of announcements you are making here? And you have a booth here as well. So when folks come to your booth, what do they see when they look at Akamai? So there are three questions there. The obvious is that we're a cloud provider and we have a fully managed Kubernetes service that is CNCF compliant. But what are we doing here? There's a few things that I want to announce. And I'll start with the one that I'm personally most excited about. And that is our contribution to this community. So open source, we are a large company, around 10,000 people, and us and many other companies that are of this size really benefit from open source. These open source solutions are what help us succeed at what we do. A lot of these large companies never give back to that though. So what we are doing, it was announced earlier today that we upgraded our CNCF sponsorship to gold. We're giving a million dollars worth of infrastructure credits to CNCF projects, and we are contributing to CNCF projects. We are contributing to Envoy, we are contributing to TrueSAL, which is a plugin for the Kubernetes secrets management, and we're also contributing to the Nginx project. So this is us giving back, it's us saying not only thank you, but that we are going to help sustain you. You help us, we help you, and I don't see that changing any time in the foreseeable future. You can consider us a staple in the open source community. In addition to that, we are also letting people know, a week ago we announced a new partnership with Neural Magic. What they do is AI inference using a technique of sparsification that makes it so that it can run performance on CPUs. So since we are a distributed cloud platform and the world's largest CDM provider, that is enabling us to actually scale machine learning inference. So we're pushing machine learning workloads to the edge, which works in tandem and bodes well with another announcement we made a couple weeks ago, which is called Gecko, which is our generalized edge compute. And this has been the mission that we've had since the acquisition of Linode, where we essentially want to take this CDM platform with 4,100 4, edge nodes and make it so that it can be converted into cloud compute. We are pushing compute to the edge so it's not only closer to end users, not only closer to the engineers who develop it, but in terms of a multi-cloud strategy, also closer to your connecting cloud platforms that you're moving data back and forth. So we have a lot to share here. We have talked a lot about distributed cloud portability. I just want to reiterate that message. What does portability distributed cloud means in this cloud-centric, centralized cloud world? Think of us contributing to the cloud as a whole, as if the cloud is an open source project. We see an area where there could be some improvement, a new feature that people have been asking for and wanting, including ourselves. So we forked it, 
we made a feature branch, we pushed our code up to that, and then we opened a PR with the upstream. When it gets merged, it benefits everyone. When we talk about a distributed cloud, we are talking about the cloud computing model where you deploy cloud native applications, which today runs in central data centers, but distributing that, pushing that out to the edge. When I talk about this, I sometimes get asked this question, well, why? Like, why would I want to do that? I have a good system going. I have my core and the central data center. I have caching and DNS load balancing at the edge and this and that. I could go through the use cases like financial transactions and security, games and social media, Bitcoin trading, anything that where milliseconds matter. I could go through those use cases but the other part is, this is actually just a thing that people have been asking for, for a long time. This is a problem that people have wanted to be solved for a long time. I've had countless conversations at many of these conferences, whether it's developers, IT decision makers, whoever, and they ask this question, do you have an easy way for me to distribute my application, for me to distribute my data, now, easy being the key word there, because are there ways to do it? Yes, but most of those techniques today typically don't fall in the category of easy. Now, let's look at the Akamai perspective. Acquiring Linode, which was a cloud platform, easy to use, developer friendly, multi-cloud friendly, with the core philosophy of being simple, accessible, and affordable. So now, back to distributing an application. The architecture is in place to really geographically distribute something, and by distribute, I'm talking about moving out of a central data center. We're giving a new meaning to scale out here. The architecture, the tech stacks involved, the expertise, typically doesn't fall in what most people would consider easy. The technical debt that comes of that, the talent that's required, all the moving parts that you have to manage, sort of crosses off accessibility. And then where you usually have to lean into SaaS products and other managed services partners, it gets expensive, and now you've fallen outside of affordable. So here Akamai comes along and says, we want to make this easy for everyone, from enterprises to mid-market to SMBs to startups. This is a continuum of cloud computing, and it's something that they have been asking for for some time. Can you talk about the uniqueness or unique challenges that comes with edge? And we'll go back to the word that you used about ease of use. So let's talk about the challenges associated with the edge and how Akamai or the whole Kubernetes ecosystem is making it, Kubernetes and easy doesn't go hand in hand, but it's still making it easier so there is no hurdles and roadblocks for adoption at the edge. So when you think about edge, you're talking about smaller resource constrained environments, right? Where you typically do have to be a little bit more aware of exactly what those limitations are. And that causes this divide. You have cloud computing and then you have edge computing. And even today where CNCF has put together white papers to define what is considered edge native, which builds on the principles of cloud native, Right? They essentially took the 12-factor app principles and evolved it to account for these constraints, these other conditions that are apparent in an edge environment. So what we're doing, and to clarify, when it comes to edge, right, is that edge compute, is that leaf devices, right, is it client edge, we fall within the category of provider edge. We are a provider of providing servers at the edge, so that can be the cutoff point between that and the end user. That can be a gateway for even further edge devices to come back. This is the typical play. But what we are doing to make this easier is we are pushing compute resources to the edge. So these are constrained areas where today for provider edge, it looks like very, very stateless workloads, some caching, some edge functions, but we're pushing the ability to do processing at the edge. Is that AI inferencing? Is that running a data pipeline? 
we have this sort of three phase approach for how we're rolling out Gecko. And the third phase of that is going to be workload orchestration. So this is where I get excited, is thinking, okay, I'm going to orchestrate, say, an Argo workflows to run a data pipeline at one of our edge locations, and then use another edge location that's very close to what I'm doing at another cloud provider that needs to ingest it, manipulate that state, send it back, and we create that fluidity. So this is where we can take the concepts of cloud native, and you still have that central management in a data center, but that it can be edge aware and sort of crawl out to the edge or use certain parts of the edge very smoothly. And I'm really, really excited for how creative our users are going to get with this over the coming years. And when we look at edge use case versus you no know, big, you know, massive data center and public cloud, does it have any impact on developers' workflow? Operators, that doesn't matter, but for developer workflow, when you do, when you talk about a different edge site people are working on, no, it doesn't matter because the same portable, this cloud uh, native architecture, cloud native application, so it doesn't really matter whether you're targeting an edge use case or whether you're looking at the big data center. Well, I think that's the point, is that edge isn't typically, it doesn't come with the same ease, the same developer ease as just the regular central data center or cloud native workflow. So that's what we're looking to achieve here. We're looking to weave those two together to make that the same simple flow, right? And we're making edge accessible to more developers. And as I mentioned earlier, we're solving this problem for them of how can I distribute my application and data and push it to the edge? And we're creating a solid layer for them to do that. Give some use cases, examples of edge in the modern world which Akamai is already serving. So the modern world already, right, we can look at like the financial industry wanting to do security and transactions. I already touched on AI inferencing. So for gaming, especially in underserved locations, locations that are underserved by internet infrastructure, where either they just have to deal with extreme latency to be connected to the gaming world, or they just quit, they just don't play the game. So now we can bring that. Pretty much any use case that really requires data localization. So this is another one. Let's talk about security and data sovereignty, right? Where you can actually better secure that by fencing it even closer to where people are doing it. You can make your decisions, send home only what you need to send home, but there's even less for that to travel. There's less hops, less networks, less rooms for interception, so it can be even more localized. And then another example I keep liking to bring up, because this is a real one that I've come across, where milliseconds matter is things like crypto trading. Okay, so if you can do so much more of this at the edge, if you can make quick decisions and be very, very reactive at the edge and not have to travel all the way back, this is a huge difference. And the expectation for this is getting much higher. And honestly, we can blame Akamai for that largely because 25 years ago, Akamai invented this thing called CDN. Enterprises were the only ones who could do anything with it back then. The rest of us had very bad dial-up internet and we were used to it being slow. Well, fast forward, something like a CDN is so accessible it's as simple as I'll point my NS rack records to your name servers and then just click the on button. So even a mom and pop shop is behind the CDN and now their end users expect that level of performance. So milliseconds matter all the way around and before we know it, microseconds are gonna matter. In fact, they already do when we look at disk operations. So those are the common use cases so far, but we're just gonna see more and more and more. And I also touched on the Argo workflows example, data pipelines. The edge is the first area where you're going to be consuming so much of this data right then and there. So how much of it can you just handle there versus having to push it all the way back? Think of all the network, you have to go back and forth. Are you going to process it? And then does it need to go all the way back there again? Do you need to hop over to another cloud? We're packaging it where it needs to be. If we just look at Gecko's announcement, if we look at you know uh, uh, what Akamai built back then and what you folks are building next, what is on the horizon when we look at Akamai and for this year? With Gecko, 
by the end of the year, we should have 100 new sites that are, I'll call them gecko enabled, right? Because we're taking existing edge locations and making them so you can quickly deploy VMs on them. So that's the first phase. The second phase is we're bringing containers via Kubernetes to those locations. And then the third phase will be the one where we're doing workload orchestration. So those 100 will turn into hundreds more. That's in addition to our 25 core compute sites that have the full stack of our cloud infrastructure primitives. There's two more coming online very soon. So it's just going to grow and grow and grow until you look up, down, left, and right, and you're seeing Akamai all over the place. But it's going to be good because we're there to help you with this. And we are multi-cloud friendly, and we are not locking you in. We are just adding more resource to make things like a multi-cloud journey easier and more feasible. Really, thank you so much for taking time out today and you know, talk about Akamai, uh, whole cloud native escape edge distributed. Thanks for great insights and as usual, I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me.